Hi folks, I've prepared this little video to help you set up and run your experiment. By now hopefully you've found this Google Sheet that's been sent to your email and you've opened it up and you can see what's uh, an equivalent of what's on my screen. In the first link, the FET Colorado link, that'll take you to the website that will give you the access to the simulation you're going to use. So that should be this page here and you can click to run now or you can click download, save it to your computer. You'll need Java um, installed in order to run this, um, but that shouldn't be a problem for you at home. So once you've installed your simulation, you should be able to open it up and you'll have this screen. I'm going to go through the stages that you'll need to go through, so hopefully it'll all be clear for you. Go to More Features tab, click on that. Click on the minus sign for the work and energy charts at the side and for the graphs. Just clear the page of those because you don't really need them for what you're going to do. Set the, under coefficient of friction, check the frictionless box and that sound's going to get fairly annoying quickly so I'm going to scroll down and deselect sound. Scroll back up. Right, the important thing here is that every time you reset your experiment you pause, so that's the button down there, it'll change to go and you're going to grab the position slider <coughs> and take it back to 15. You're then going to press go And you can pause it just at the bottom. I need to figure out a new way to turn that sound off. <clears throat> and you want to look at the speed of the object at the bottom of the ramp. Now it doesn't matter which object you use, I've just used the filing cabinet because it was the first one there. But you probably want to keep that object the same throughout the whole experiment. So once you've recorded that speed and the height of your ramp, so I would go back into my um, Google Sheet and in my table of results, I might have height of ramp and I might have the velocity or speed at the bottom. Okay. And in my height of ramp, I'll type in 2.6 probably want to make sure you've got units and things but I'll let you deal with that and my speed was I'm just going to use the positive value for speed so it was 7.3 meters per second I'm then going to go back into the simulation and I can drag the pile of books to adjust the height of the ramp so I probably want to ensure my range is as wide as possible. I want to have a very low reading and pause, reset the filing cabinet. Oh, wrong button. To use the use the position slider here. So pause it, drag the position back, and then when I'm ready, you see that the speed isn't zero. So if this happens, take the object let it run, it'll get down to the bottom and when it's stopped okay you see the speed resets to zero then pause it and return the filing cabinet to its original position and you can see now that the speed is zero so it's ready to go just watch out for that because it's going to affect your results if you're not careful press go And when the filing cabinet gets to the horizontal section at the bottom of the ramp, the speed should be constant, and I'll click pause, and so I can record my speed, which is 3 meters per second, and the height of my ramp was 0 0.3 meters. Okay, so you'll go through it and you'll continue to collect data. Um, remember, a wide range is going to be very useful for you here. Once you've collected that data and filled in the information about your control variables, 
your independent variable, so that's the thing that you deliberately change in the experiment, and your dependent variable, and the dependent variable is what changes as a result of what you've done to the independent variable. Then I want you to scroll down and you'll see some tasks here. I want you to create your first graph, and in this situation your first graph should be a curved line. If it's not a curved line, something's wrong. The classic example of what may go wrong is that you haven't used a wide enough range, and so go back and add more values to your table of results. I've put in a little link here if you're not sure how to create a graph in uh, Google Sheets, and so that can help you. Then you're going to need to decide what it is you're going to do to change your curved line to, to transform your data so that that curved line becomes a straight line. And here I've referred you to page 18 in your workbook. Add a another column to your table um, and put the, the title of that column as well, the transformation, whatever, whatever you're doing to one part of your data to try and reach a straight line relationship. And once you've done that, you're going to plot a setting, second graph and so you'll plot one of your, uh, probably your dependent variable against your transformed independent variable would be the way that I would do it. Once you've done that, you should have a scatter graph that has a straight line relationship and you write the equation of the line um, using the quantities represented on the graph. So you shouldn't have y and x anywhere in that equation, but you use the y equals mx plus c relationship, substituting the quantities that are on the axes of your graph, just watching out that you're using a straight line graph, and then that gives you your equation, the mathematical relationship between the quantities that you're investigating. You can add a discussion if you wish, but at the moment, my main purpose is just to get you to the point where you're comfortable with working out the mathematical relationship. All right. Good luck.